This we're being joined by Dr. Srikant Gondrapalli. He is the Dean of School of International Studies and Professor of China Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thank you. Sir, the no-shows at the G20, that has become a topic of discussion, great discussion and speculation. What is your take on Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin not participating at the G20? How do you feel it's going to shape the, the talks here or the agenda here going forward? Uh, thank you. As you rightly mentioned, uh, there are uh, economic issues um, that uh, she is trying to tackle. The Asian Nikkei mentioned about the hauling up of the Chinese president by the party elders, specifically uh, former Vice President Tsum Ching Ho, who was actually responsible for uh, Xi's promotion in 2012 as the General Secretary of the party. Uh, and so his mentor was criticizing, uh, according to this report. Um, uh, having said that, as you mentioned, uh, President Putin has uh, not uh, uh, been attending this meeting, uh, um, which basically means that uh, flowing from Bali summit meeting, where China and Russia cobbled up together uh, against the 18 other countries, uh, position on the Ukraine crisis. Uh, it is likely that if Xi Jinping were to attend this meeting, he would have been isolated in the absence of President Putin, who mentioned to Prime Minister Modi on August 28th that he would not be attending the meeting right. for various reasons. Uh, so which means then uh, Xi Jinping would have been isolated uh, in the international domain and that is uh, a problematic for the Chinese foreign policy. Uh, China has been saying they are not responsible for the Ukrainian conflict, it is Russia. Uh, nevertheless, they have a limitless partnership with the Russians since February last year. Yeah. And uh, so there is that concern there, sensitivity there. Uh, and uh, the Chinese would have been aligned at against uh, 18 other countries, and this is uh, so Premier Li Qiang's presence, uh, he is uh, basically a management expert, economy expert, and as part of the head of the state council, he looks after the economic issues. Right. Uh, and G20 is mainly in terms of the economic issues and globalization, uh, the trade related. China is the largest trading country in the world. Uh, as you mentioned just now, the 75% of trade uh, is with the G20 countries and uh, among these, China is the largest in terms of trade. So Li Qiang's brief is uh, uh, basically on looking at the trade-related matters, smoothening up. Uh, secondly, in terms of economic growth rates, China had fallen uh, uh, up to 3.3%. They maintained an average of 7.7% between 2000 to 2010 uh, during the uh, pre-Xi uh, Jinping era and when Xi Jinping took over, uh, they have uh, declined in terms of economic growth rates. So Li Qiang's uh, brief is how to maintain these growth rates, which is, of course, a Herculean task, as you mentioned right. just now in terms of unemployment, I, real estate right. I, I just and others. Take, with, uh, take from what you mentioned earlier regarding, uh, you know, the way India has come forward for the developing nations and how if you can talk to us about how the African Union is going to be included and what kind of step India has taken, what it means and how, what kind of a trend it's going to set for G20 going forward, what kind of uh, efforts that India has made is going to shape how G20 moves forward from here. Uh, I think that is a very important topic because China has been sporting that it is a leader of the global south uh, and India's efforts since January this year when Prime Minister Modi organized uh, the meeting of nearly 120 countries right, right. and asking them what is their priorities even inviting uh, them the and community. it's actions louder than words when it comes to india more than china here so the uh, the uh, he asked several countries what are their concerns and the the bottom line that was expressed uh, in this meeting in january was uh, on energy prices increase food prices increase uh, fertilizer prices increase, which did affect a number of developing countries, specifically food and energy secu uh, security aspects. Uh, that really pinched their GDP and uh, 
So this is the bottom line, and this is what India had been raising for the past nine months right. uh, about the energy security aspects and also food security. Um, the the concern here is the fallout of the Ukraine uh, war rather than Ukraine itself. Uh, and this has been clarified by Dr. Jay Shankar, the foreign minister. Uh, and this has been the uh, main thrust area in the recent times. Of course, uh, uh, some more aspects have been added, such as digitalization of the um, platforms and uh, uh, in which India made uh, huge strides on Jandan, on uh, UPI, on uh, um, um, you know a number of other digital digital digitalization aspects of currency trade and uh, other. Uh, we have also had the Supply Chain Resilience Initiative right. Act two years ago between uh, Japan, Australia, and India. And how do we restore the supply chain mechanism in which China failed due to the COVID-19 and other which originated in Wuhan. Uh, and this suggests that China, India is actually making some alternative uh, long-term measures uh, such as how do we protect the global south from these vagaries of uh, economic disruptions, technological, as well as the uh, the uh, uh, energy and other uh, related problems. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Srikant Kondapalli, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Vyond or with your perspective on this. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.